All right, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Jeremy Pilarski, you guys know, with Cam Forbes and Alex Pilarski. I don't know why we're introducing ourselves. Everyone's from Realtron here. Um, Cam's going to talk doing us through. all kinds of Zoom meetings, that's why. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we do, we do, I, I get my broadcaster voice on and then we just go. Um, I am having a little bit of trouble with the live stream, but we're recording, so uh, we will see what happens. Uh, I'll see if I can get it live. If not, we'll post it right after this. Uh, gentlemen, thank you. Let's take another minute or two to get people in, but we already have 60 people. So this is an important topic that people are interested in. I know there's going to be a lot of uh, questions and people interested. Cam, uh, how long is your set presentation about? I'm hoping I limit it to about 20, 25 minutes, guys, because I really want to open it up for your questions uh, that you have for your particular situations or generally. So uh, yeah, 20, 25 minutes. I, I don't want to talk too long. Okay, so let's give it one more minute. I'm about to give up on this Facebook thing. Let me just try one more thing, but uh, we'll get started momentarily. I think the, the group has leveled off. So uh, let's get started. Rose says, hi, everyone. Hello. Hello, hello. Hi, Rose. <laughs> hey, Rose. Okay, Cam, right. take it yeah. away. Perfect. Thank you very much, Jeremy and, uh, and Alex. And uh, yeah. yeah, hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I, I I'm, I'm wanting this to be a just-in-time session for you because obviously the personal real estate corporations just became a thing as of October 1st. So this is just in time and live and help you make the best decisions for yourself. So I've titled it, you know, is it for you? So that's really what I want to do with you for, as I say, about 20, 25 minutes and any question, obviously let's, let's rip away any of whether it's a uh, personal related or not. And, and I'll, and I'll answer it and, uh, and let you know. So, so I'll just pop on to the, so what is a, what is a personal real estate corporation? So I will call it a prec from now on, not a perk, a prec. I think the last time I said this, I was saying perk. So prec advantages, disadvantages, what are the key features? Um, what is right for you? And the differences, similarities to the Remax Realtron Incorporation program, which of course we've had for over five years now and have about 50 of our agents in that program. So pros and cons generally of a personal real estate corporation and differences, similarities, pros, cons versus the, I'll call it traditional incorporation program that Remax Realtron has had for some time now. And then Q&A, which is really what's most important, I know, for all of you. So, uh, so let me just begin by saying that a personal real estate corporation is truly that it's personal. That's really key. So what it means by that is it is one and one agent corporation. So you can't have two registrants as part of a PREC. It is one registrant who is the only equity owner, who is the only um, equity shareholder is the only director, is the only officer. So if you set up a PREC, you're going to be the president, treasurer, secretary of the company. You're going to be only director and you are going to be the only equity owner. And I'm going to explain what an equity owner versus a non-equity owner. Uh, brokerages, so they've left it as an option. So brokerages don't actually have to be a part of this. So they don't have to offer this to their agents. Of course, we at Realtron always want to give you the greatest number of options and, and what is best suited for you. So we are offering it. By Monday next week, you can roll with it. So we'll have the agreement done tomorrow that's required. It's a services agreement. So you'll be able to roll with it if you feel this is right for you as of, uh, well, Tuesday, I guess, sorry, since Thanksgiving is Monday. Uh, as I already said, it was allowed effective October 1st, so this really is hot off the presses just in time. Why incorporate? So whether it's a personal real estate corporation or the incorporation that Remax Realtron has done for over five years, key benefits are tax savings, limited liability, obviously great succession vehicle for whether you're having a succession to the next generation or you're looking to sell your business to others. So those are great advantages of incorporating. And as I already said, you must enter into a services agreement with the brokerage that you're associated with. So Remax Realtron, and we'll have that agreement done by end of day tomorrow. So we can sign it with you Tuesday if you're all ready to roll. So advantages, disadvantages. So um, marketing. So this is one key difference between a PREC and the incorporation program that we've had for so long now. 
you can't market the name of your personal real estate corporation. So if it's Cam Forbes Personal Real Estate Corporation, I can't market that. I can't put it in advertising. I can't put it on my listings. I can't, I can't put it on my business card or anything. You would still be a sales representative or a broker with Remax Realtron Realty Inc. So you would still advertise yourself as Remax Realtron Realty Inc. Comma brokerage, Cam Forbes broker in my case, or your case, whatever your broker or salesperson. Okay, so you can't advertise yourself as uh, your name of your prec. So it's that's different. It's a it's a disadvantage, I guess, because you can't put your name with uh, Remax and Realtron together. A bit of a disadvantage. Ownership. So a prec is more restrictive than the other incorporation program. The again, as I said, the the only equity owner can be you as the agent. So your wife can't be, your husband can't be, your kids can't be, your parents can't be an equity owner. Whereas the other incorporation program, they can, okay? And so the ownership that your direct family can have, adult children or a trust for underage children or your life partner is a non-equity interest. And I'll explain the difference there. So non-equity shareholders means that you don't really have a share of the assets retained earnings of the corporation. You can be paid a dividend, but it is more restrictive and you'd talk to your accountant about it, but it's a little bit more restrictive, but you can be paid a dividend as a non-equity uh, shareholder. The other thing, as I already mentioned, is uh, you as the agent. So if I'm Cam Forbes Personal Real Estate Corporation, I'm now the president of that company. I'm now the secretary of that company. I'm now the treasurer of that company. And I am the sole and only director of that company. I must direct that company. I must have control of that company. None of my family members can have that. They can't control. They can't have any say in the ongoing control of the business or accountability of the business. So PREC. Uh, cannot be owned by more than one registrant, and I've, as I've already said. So it's personal to the agent. It's one agent only. You can't have, so this, uh, this prec is not ideal if you have a large team or a, or a growing team or you want to have a big team. It's not the ideal way to go. You're not a member of uh, TREB as a brokerage member. Not a big pro or con to that, right? You just, you're not going to be a member of TREB. So your listings on TREB, when you have a personal real estate corporation, are going to say Remax Realtron Realty Inc. They're not going to say, uh, you know, Cam Forbes Personal Real Estate Corporation. Um, you're, not a, you're not a Remax franchisee. So to the extent that that's an advantage, and there is some advantages to being a franchisee, training access to professional development programs, that sort of thing. You're not a Remax franchisee when you're a PREC you don't have a separate real estate or commission trust account. So pros and cons to that, I mean, it's administratively more simple because there isn't separate accounts. Um, and so no separate accounts with a personal real estate corporation. You can, for either incorporation program, if you have an existing incorporated company for whatever reason, you can use that. So you don't have to start a new company if you don't want to. You can use an existing corporation to become your personal real estate corporation, or if you wanted to go with Remax Realtron's program, which will still be live and active too, because there's a need for that program as well. You can use an existing incorporated company if you so happen to have one already. And the neat thing with this is you can switch. So let's just say you're new in your career and I, you really should be incorporated guys. So, you know, Aria and Trab have all been wishy-washy on this because they don't want to provide you with personal advice. I, I can step in and give you personal advice. You're a business person, you should be incorporated. The personal real estate corporation reduces your cost to do so. So it is a great new option, particularly if you're newer in your career, you're not, you know, a big team or anything like that. It's a good thing for you. Okay, and the neat thing is if you become a PREC, you can then, if you decide you want to expand and have a bigger team and have more agents, a part of your brokerage, or you want to have owners that are not family members, you can then change it to a Remax Realtron Incorporated program. So great flexibility now. You've now got, you know, three options. The industry generally just has two, you know, being an agent or a PREC. We, we will give you three options and continue to give you three options, which, which is great. Tax savings are the same. So they both benefit from the small business tax rates. So that's great. And that's the key advantage. So 13, 14, 15% versus, uh, you know, marginal tax rate of almost 54% over 200 grand in Canada. So significant, significant savings. The ongoing accounting fees are about the same. So you have to pay to have a income tax return for your company. So you're going to have a personal income tax return. You're going to have a company income tax return. Okay, so you have to pay extra accounting fees 
for an accountant to do your tax return for the company. And the same thing on HST, you're gonna have an HST account for your personal real estate corporation, and you're gonna have an HST account for you individually. So you're now filing two HST filings and you're now remitting two different HST file amounts every quarter. Okay, as I already mentioned, Realtron will offer both programs. So you've now got an option, great, great to have options because they are ideally for you at different stages of the career, that both will be a good option for you. In terms of a holding company, you know, this is where I was unclear and the actual regulations are a bit unclear, but when I listened into the ARIA sessions yesterday and today, they had a special one for brokers and then the agent one today, they did say confidently that you can have a holding company as long as that holding company, again, meets the criteria of a personal real estate corporation, which is, of course, that it's owned equity owned only by you. So your holding company has to be only owned by you, can't be owned by any other non-family members or in a non-equity position only by your direct family members, your, uh, your kids and, your, and your, your spouse, your partner and your parents. Okay, and uh, we, I can go into that more if you, if you have any questions about that. Holding companies are kind of neat because you can limit liability, but you don't need to have one. There's the administrative burdens about the same with both of these uh, guys. So there's, we set up the program five years ago in corporation program to not add any extra administrative burden to you. And the personal real estate corporation really doesn't add extra administrative burden either, other than you just have to file a separate tax return and you have to file a separate HST return. So both are pretty good. They'll allow you to continue to focus on your highest and best use, which is of course prospecting, negotiating, presenting, right? So uh, that's obviously always been your, your best and highest use, not doing a whole bunch of paperwork or cutting checks or anything like that, which would be a bad use of your time. So is this right for you? What is right for you? Is this right for you? I just put a few questions here just to kind of get us all thinking. So, so do you want to have other registrants work in your company? So if the answer to that is yes, a personal real estate corporation is not for you, you should take advantage of the REMAX Royaltron Incorporation program, okay? So let me be clear again. If you are an agent and you want to have an incorporated company and you want other agents to be a part of that company, you can't do it with a personal real estate corporation. So that's not the best vehicle for you to be incorporated with, okay? Do you want to market the name of your incorporated company? Then of course a PREC, you can't do that as I mentioned, right? So a PREC, you don't advertise it, nothing. So if I'm Cam Forbes Personal Real Estate Corporation, I can't advertise that. I can't put that on my business cards. I can't put that anywhere. I would advertise myself again as Cam Forbes Broker, Remax Realtron Realty Inc, comma brokerage. That's what I would have on all of my marketing materials if I'm a personal real estate corporation. Tax savings, uh, life insurance deductibility. So do you want to have those? And I think the answer should be yes to everybody, right? Why pay the tax man when you can keep that money and reinvest it in your real estate business to buy more lawn signs, buy more bus shelters, buy more geographic farms, buy larger geographic farms, you know, uh, pay for an assistant, a licensed assistant to help you, sorry, unlicensed administrative assistant to help you. Why would you give that money to the government when you can invest that to make more money? And that's ultimately big picture why government has approved this. They believe, and we know, that if you have a dollar to invest in your real estate brokerage, that's better for the economy than you giving that dollar to the government. Okay, so that's why this has been approved and that's why this is so great. And that's why, you know, you want you have tax savings and you and also, yeah, and uh, just be clear on this, life insurance deductibility. So a personal real estate corporation, you can now deduct your life insurance. You're the principal of the company, you can actually have a deductible life insurance cost. So that's another neat added benefit of being incorporated because I know many of you have life insurance now and it's just simply a cost like the mortgage on your house, whereas you could make it a deductible cost when you're incorporated. Uh, do you want to be able to sell your business to the next generation of your family? So if uh, the answer is net, yes, either vehicle will work for you. So the Personal Real Estate Corporation will help with that. And the Remax Realtron Corporation program would help with that. And if you plan to be in business for a while, right? So you're not at the very end of your career, you definitely should incorporate with either a Personal Real Estate Corp, a PREC, or the Remax Realtron Corp program. You know, really the only extra costs of a PREC are accounting fees to do a tax return in HST every year. You got to incorporate the company up front, so a grand maybe, 
But if you think about it, right, if you just are able to save $10,000 in your company a year, retained earnings of $10,000, you've saved three grand, which covers your, your annual cost of accounting fees, just, just like that. So it's really simple. I think it's a really simple question. I think you all should do it because I, unless you're getting out of the business, that's a different matter. But I know you guys are in the business. You're in it for the long term. You're in it to grow. You're in it to get advantage on your competitors. You're in it to compete and win. And this is a way for you to do it. So personal real estate corporation is a fantastic thing to be introduced to our industry, just as the REMAX Rural Toronto Corporation program is a fantastic thing as well. Both are available to you with us. Not Most brokerages don't have both available to you. And some brokerages may choose not to do the personal real estate corp. I, I don't think so. I think most will, Bill, but they don't have to. And actually, I think I'm, uh, I'm even faster with my time here. So I'm <laughs> actually getting right to questions and thank you. But I, just before I go, um, I'll get Jeremy back on here too to uh, just handle some questions and things. I'm just going to quickly go through this one more time, guys, just as a summary. So a personal real estate corporation is a great thing because you'll get great tax savings. They call it deferral, but great tax savings. So the personal small business tax rate's about 13, 14, 15% versus your marginal tax rate when you make over 200,000 of about 53, 54%. So you've got, you know, and even if you, and even if you're a marginal tax rate, you're making a uh, hundred grand marginal tax rates, 40% or 38%, you've got, you know, 20% tax savings. So on 10 grand, that's two grand, right? Of savings a year. So it's fantastic and that just grows and compounds every year. So you should incorporate. Prec's a great option. It's a lower cost option for you. It has a few extra limitations. The main one is that a Prec, you can be the only agent in that corporation. You cannot have any other agents registered with your Prec. You are not a registrant. A Prec is not a registrant. And so you can't market your, your Prec you can't have any other equity owners of the PREC. So you can't have a non-registrant owning any part of a PREC uh, other than your family members. And the family members have to be your life partner, spouse, your um, kids, or your parents. Those are the only people that can be part of ownership of a personal real estate corporation. And generally the you know, tax savings, um, you've got uh, a great limitation of liability with a corporation as well, which is great. And you've got the ability for some really estate planning, succession planning. You don't have to have what, what it, in essence you have is you can pass on the retained earnings or value of that company to your kids without incurring a tax event. So that's a fantastic thing for succession planning from generation to generation or, or to sell to, uh, to another party. So, so that's pretty well the, the summary. And I know I went very fast there, guys. Uh, and I guess we're 119, so I, I was about the 20, 20 minutes. Um, do we have anything in the chat so far? Or yeah, that was great. Or, yeah, uh, yeah. A lot of questions have come in, Cam. Thanks for that. Hey, we're perfect. really lucky to uh, have your not only real estate expertise, but accounting expertise and able to put that together. So thank you for navigating this for us. Uh, go quickly in order that we receive the questions. Sure. Um, Justin Cohen from the Willowdale office asks, uh, can team members have a prec under an incorporated team? They sure can. And this was great. A session we had about three weeks ago, Brandon Paul Zanello asked this too. So this is fantastic, right? So Justin, you can attract people to Barry Cohen homes by offering them now to be paid into a PREC. So they can set up a PREC and they can work associated with Remax Realtron Barry Cohen homes. So yes, you can do that. It's fantastic. And it's a great option for you, Justin, and your uh, brokerage there. So fantastic question. Thanks for that. Okay. Uh, next, Aaron Wan from Thornhill says, what are the procedure to set it up? How do we set it up? Yeah, no problem. You incorporate a company. So you can do that individually, or you can just hire a lawyer or accountant to do that, Aaron. It's about a thousand bucks to get an incorporated company. Um, there's no real restrictions. You can't have Remax in the name of it. You can't have Realtron in the name of it. So you can call it Aaron Wan Personal Real Estate Corp. Um, you could call it, you know, ABC, Personal Real Estate Corp. There's really no restrictions on the name because it's not an advertised or marketing name. And you just have to enter into a services agreement with Remax Realtron, which we'll have ready for you to take a look at uh, first thing Tuesday morning next week. We've almost finished it. It's almost done. We're just taking our, our last little look at it to make sure it makes best sense for you guys. 
And, uh, and then you just send an email to Rico and say, I've set up a PREC, here's the name, here's the address, here's who I am and my registration number, and you're ready to roll. There's no process of approval for the Real Estate Council of Ontario. So really technically, you could have these things running, even if you don't have a company set up right now, you could have these running in about a week from now if you, if you wanted to. And I'd encourage you to get moving fast. So thanks for that question, Aaron. Great. Um, unknown name, they have a Galaxy S10. Would okay. it be possible to have an incorporated team leader have a personal corporation? So I'm not 100% sure why you'd want to have a double corporation, but I guess you'd have a uh, brokerage and then a well, prec under that. Yeah, I think I understand the question. So thank you, Galaxy X10. Um, the, the, so the neat thing, if you're in a team now and you're not incorporated, okay, so you're a team, you're a partnership, two of, two of you are working together, you know, you're sharing your, your investment in marketing, you're sharing your geographic area, that sort of thing. You both can set up your own personal real estate corporation. So if Jeremy and I happen to be working together, obviously we're both not selling, but if we were working together, I could be Cam Ford's personal real estate corporation. Jeremy could be Jeremy Polarski personal real estate corporation. And we could market ourselves together as uh, Jeremy and Cam team, Remax Realtron Realty Inc, comma brokerage. And, um, and so we could still get the advantages of a tax saving from a personal real estate corporation, even as a team. The challenge is though, as your team gets larger, it's very difficult to share expenses and things. So, you know, if you really have one or two people involved in the team, it's not a big deal and you can do the prex. but if you're really four or five, six people, that's when it gets really problematic and you jeopardize your tax status fairly quickly. So it makes more sense to do the traditional Remax Realtron Incorporation program in that case. And I hope Great. that answers your question, uh, Galaxy X10. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that I think that got it. <laughs> yeah. uh, Vanessa Jeffrey asked, are there savings different over 500K? I think that's just related to the tax rate of the corporation. Yeah, same, same deal, Vanessa. So uh, same deal over 500K. You get fewer small business benefits, but you still get a great tax benefit even after 500K. And there's also a capital gains exemption of about $880,000 for a corporation. So that's also available for both types of corporations. I don't wanna to get too complex, but thank you, Vanessa, for the question. So the, the answer is yes, it's the same tax rates apply to the uh, corporation that you would have had, which you have, Vanessa, with Remax Realtron and a personal real estate corporation. There is an increase in tax burden after 500 grand, but it's still preferential to being an individual. Great. Uh, Al asks, what's the difference between a personal and Remax Realtron? So I think just incorporating, uh, you went over it a little bit in the presentation, but I think just if you bottom line, uh, if someone's trying to decide, what would be a, a differentiator in the decision? Yeah. So the biggest differentiator would be um, who do you want to own this company and do you want any other agents to be a part of this company? Okay. So if you're, you're, if you work on your own and you really have no involvement of, you know, a spouse who's, who's registered or kids who are registered or anything, the personal real estate corporation would be the way to go. So if your business is, is like that, the personal real estate corporation is the way to go. If you are working with another person who's not a family member and licensed or a family member that's licensed, a personal real estate corporation, you can start there. But really, as you get beyond, you know, one or two, you know, two members or so, you'd want to go to the Remax Realtron uh, program. And I, and I can talk to anybody about, you know, more details in regard to that. But the, the, the personal real estate corporation has lower costs. So it's an easier program to get into. There's a lower investment, but there is a few more restrictions about it. So, so that's the trade-off. Yeah, I, think, I would also uh, say, go ahead, Alex. I would also say that one of the major benefits is that uh, you are the broker owner of your own company. So you're promoting yourself as a broker owner. This is my company. The decision stops here. I make the right decisions with nobody telling me yes or no. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that marketing so angle. That, yeah. That is the marketing important. angle yeah. that yeah. you are, that you are the broker owner of your own company. Yeah. Um, and, so, and that you're, and, and that you advertise your own company name too, right? Correct. So you make sure correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Uh, Steve Maislin asks, uh, what's the difference in liability versus staying as an individual versus incorporating? Does it make a difference? 
Yeah, so there is, and great question, Steve. Thanks for that. Um, so just very quickly, as an agent with Remax Realtron, we have a separate liability insurance policy that covers you guys for things like a slip and fall injury at an open house or showing that you may have. So I, I, I like to say this because it's another reason why Realtron is a great place to be. We, we make sure we look after things like that that a lot of brokers don't even know about. We've got a separate liability insurance policy to cover you guys if somebody slips and falls. And it covers the legal fees, right? Which is what is so extraordinary when somebody sues you because they've fallen and, and can't work, whether it's real or not. Um, as a Corporation, if so, with the Remax Realtron and Corporation program, so Remax Realtron, Barry Cohen Homes, or Frank Polzinello Realty, that uh, we have a separate liability insurance policy program associated with that, which is a little extra cost, but hardly anything. So I'd make sure you're covered for liability there as well. And we haven't done this yet, but we'll contact our insurer and we'll make sure that we've got an option for you to ensure you're covered as a personal real estate corporation. So you do have a separate entity, right? It's a personal real estate corporation. So that technically creates an additional liability and you need to cover for that. So there is an insurance angle to this. So if there is a little extra cost, there's an insurance angle here, uh, Steve. So that's a great question. We'll, we'll have an option for you. Hopefully that'll bring a really cost-effective insurance coverage for you. Good. Uh, Amir Z asks, uh, how do you register your PREC with Realtron or your accountant? Uh, you mentioned contacting Rico with it. Yeah. So first step is to incorporate your company with a lawyer and accountant. Second step is to enter into an agreement with Remax Realtron. It's a services agreement. And final step is to email your name, the name of your personal real estate corporation, the address of your personal real estate corporation to Rico. And as soon as you do that, as soon as you send that, you can be live with your personal real estate corporation and we will pay for any new deals that are being done. So any deals you write after that will pay your personal real estate corporation as opposed to you individually. Uh, so, so yeah, you, you just, I just want to uh, get on that point because you brought it up uh, yeah. to clarify really well. Uh, this is for all deals written after your prec is approved by RICO. So until that's happened, if you have a deal closing tomorrow, this does not apply. If you have a deal closing next month that you've already written, it doesn't apply. But if you're going to do a deal next week and you set it up this week, you're good. Yeah. Correct? Yes, exactly. Okay. Perfect. So I just wanted to clarify that. Perfect. Uh, do we need a broker's license for a prec? No. No. That is great. Yeah, right. You can be a salesperson. So, which yeah, is great. that's great. Uh, can we use a federal registered corp with a prec? No, it has to be an Ontario registered okay. corp. So it can't be a federal registered corp. Okay. And how long it will, will it take to be up and running, Barb asks? Well, as I say, we'll be ready at Realtron on Tuesday. And, uh, and Rico is already ready. So it's as fast as you guys can incorporate a company really is all we're talking about, which the, the only takes problem a week. Is, the only problem is that uh, they're going to be behind at Rico. <laughs> they, there's no okay. approval process though, Alex, you just email okay. them. There's no, they don't need any acknowledgement or All anything. Right. Yeah. So yeah. then so, you're right. Uh, no couple delay. of days. Yeah. Couple yeah of so days. just in terms of process, everyone should, if you're in a hurry to do this, run to your uh, uh, lawyer and accountant, set up your corporation, get that done quickly, make sure you have an HST number and, uh, and then contact your manager and your manager will have a contract ready by next week. Yeah, That's exactly. Right. I'll by have Tuesday. in the, yeah, by yeah. Tuesday, by Tuesday we'll have that in the hands of everybody. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, the managers will be able to send that out. And then once you send it to Rico and you probably also want to CC, who should they CC when they send uh, it to Your manager, Rico? I think, and that would be great to, they, you know, make sure they're in the loop and, uh, and that would be fantastic. Okay. Perfect. Uh, so, but what information do we need, uh, from a brokerage point of view in terms of, uh, knowing who to pay and everything? Yeah, what we'd like to receive from you is just your incorporation, your Form 1 incorporation document. It's really simple, uh, Form 1 incorporation document, because that just has your name and your address on it. And that's what we need just to put in our accounting system to be able to pay you to your personal real estate corporation. So that's all we need. Perfect. Uh, do you need to, Deborah Gonzalez asks, do you need a certain gross income to have a PREC? No. 
really, uh, you're talking about maybe a three grand cost going forward, Deborah. So do it. <laughs> and, and uh, yeah, you mentioned even savings. I mean, with a corporation, you uh, incorporating under uh, owning your own brokerage of Remax Realtron Incorporation, we always talked about having retained earnings of 50,000 or greater covers your costs and makes it worthwhile from a tax point of view. Uh, I think this, you said even $10,000, Ten. if you can save $10,000 a year, you're saving taxes, a uh, great way to start saving for your future, start saving for your retirement, uh, just to start this corporation and give you an excuse to start putting away money if you haven't been doing so. And even if uh, you don't have years. 10, even if you don't have 10 consistently, guys, this is a way to smooth your income too, right? So you can get paid into your, you have a great year. You have $300,000. You pay it into your personal real estate corp. You only take out a hundred. You got 200,000 of retained earnings. Next year, you, you take six months off. You only make a hundred. You can pull out more money next year. And so you can, Street, you can um, flatten your income from year to year, make it less uh, up and down, less choppy. And it's a great way to be able to consistently invest in your business too. So you can say a multi-year marketing investment, right? I'm going to have a farm. I'm going to have five years as my investment. This is a great way to, you can plan out five years much easier than as an individual. So can you explain that for me a little bit further? Sure. If, uh, if someone's uh, earning an income, let's say you're earning $100,000 and you're expensing $10,000 a year just for easy math, yeah, uh, you're already covering those expenses. Does it, is it a further benefit? You're already writing off those expenses. Are there further benefits to doing it through a corporation? Yeah, because the, so the, the retained earnings or profit in the corporation attracts a very low tax rate. So you've end up, you end up having more money in your corporation than you would have had individually. And that money you can keep there, don't have to use it. You could use it the next year, right? So if the next year income comes lower, you could still invest in your farm because the money's there, right? So it's a great way to flatten your expenses and revenue year to year. You know, at the end of the year, we always get this question, you know, near December, near Christmas, can I just close this deal into the new year, right? This is a way to do it even in October, you're flattening your income and it's doing almost the same thing. So uh, it's another great advantage of incorporating with the Personal Real Estate Corp or the Remax Realtron Incorporation Program. Great point. So I think people shouldn't look at their uh, savings after tax, really. You have to look at what you're walking away with and then paying tax on if you put that into your corporation. Yeah. then you'd save a lot of tax on that. You're going to anyway. keep more money in your hands that you can invest or, or take into your hands when your income is lower. Great. Uh, Miriam Vassen asks, what's the cost of doing your taxes under a corporation? It's going to vary. It'll vary by accountant, Miriam. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I would say it's about 2,500 bucks roughly to do a simple corporate tax return, but talk to your accountant and he'll tell you how much it should be. It's very simple. So it shouldn't cost you. Some people will quote you 5,000. Some people will probably quote you 1,000. So just, just ask your accountant how much to prepare my corporate tax return. And the more organized you are with your paperwork, the less it's going to cost. Right. And the uh, truth of it is, okay. and the truth of it is, Cam, yeah. we can give them the same reports that we always give them, which is here are the deals, here's what you got paid out of. Nothing really changes no. in our system. So for your accountant to file the paperwork should be very, very cheap because be there's not so much to be done. Yeah. But mm -hmm. the only thing is, I know somebody asked a question. Let me jump in. It's a good time. Do you need a lawyer and an accountant? And no, you don't need both, but you should talk to your accountant to uh, see the benefits to you and to set it up properly. And it's yeah. more of an accounting than legal because you want, we're all doing this to help save you tax dollars. And so an accountant will be in a better position to save you tax dollars. Yeah. Good point. Great. Uh, Jess Wu has a bunch of questions. Uh, she knows there's a monthly fee required for a sub brokerage program. Uh, for the PREC, will Realtron be charging any fee as well? Uh, there's, no, we won't because I, I don't believe there's any extra cost associated with us. So the fee we charge for our incorporated program, great question, thanks, Jess, um, is related to the costs we incur, right? The extra labor we had to hire, the accounting package we had to buy, the insurance, the liability insurance. So if there is any cost with a PREC, it would be related to liability insurance. The cost of that right now for the program we have for incorporations is about 25 bucks a month. So it's a very small amount of money. I'm not guaranteeing that's what we can get for you as a personal real estate corp, but it is not a, a material amount of money. Right. 
Uh, good. What's the earliest incorporation date allowed? Would it be October 1st, 2020, or could we roll this to January 1st, 2020 for tax filing purposes? Uh, so I think that's uh, what, what we were talking about before in terms of this is deals written as of the time your prec is set up. Yeah. Yeah. So just to be clear, if, if I incorporate my prec and send a letter to um, Recode that I'm active on Tuesday, any deal I write from Tuesday on, even though it's still going to say Remax or Ultron on the paperwork, your, your personal real estate corporation is set up and we can pay your personal real estate corporation. For deals prior to Tuesday that you already wrote that just have to be closed, we just have to cut a check to you. Unfortunately, that still has to be paid to you personally. And that's not our decision. We'd love to be able to do that for you. But Revenue Canada looks at who was involved when the deal was done and your prec didn't exist. So you're gonna fail that argument, unfortunately, and they'll assess you at a personal tax rate. So, so anyhow, that's why I get going with it and, as fast and, as you can. Yeah. Yeah, and, and be careful. You know, the, the advantage of this is that any new deals that you write, in, that instead of closing this year, you know, will go into the prec. So in a sense, your personal income has stopped this year. But the last thing you want, and, and the tax department will be looking for it, is a tax audit. Um, it, it's plus uh, plus um, penalties, right? So yeah, it, it, don't don't fool around for a little bit of money. Yeah, don't short term gain, long term pain. Sure, Definitely yeah, don't do it. I mean, yeah, yeah. Once they start looking at this, it, it they never leave you alone. Uh, okay, great. Uh, would uh, Jess be able to pay her assistant out of the PREC? And uh, the extension of that, I would say, is can you pay your kids? Can you pay your spouse? Can you pay your gardener? You can pay so non-registered people, you can pay to do work for you just like you do now as an agent. So as an agent, you can hire your son to distribute your flyers in a neighborhood and pay him per door or whatever. You can do that as a PREC, Jess. And so, yes, the answer, if this is an administrative assistant you're talking about and you pay them a salary or you pay them a, you know, an independent contractor amount, they invoice you every month or every couple of weeks. Yes, you can do that under a personal real estate corporation. It's a legitimate business cost that can be written off. Great. Uh, Steve again asks, uh, can you carry out non-real estate business through your prec? <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, so yes, you can't do any real estate activities in your prec because it's not a registrant, but you can. So here's a neat thing. So you can still own investment properties in your prec if you wanted to with your retained earnings. You can purchase bonds, you can purchase stocks. Just be very careful with that before you get involved in too much. They call it passive income because the more passive income you have, the more chances you'll lose your small business deductibility. So the answer, Steve, is yes, you can do non-real estate activities in your PREC. Ideally, they'd be active things, not passive income, but you can you know, invest in passive investments as well, but they shouldn't be the majority of your income in your PREC. But you would say it would make sense to take over time your retained earnings and say buy a property with that retained earnings and things like that. That makes sense. Yeah. And you know, there's, there's a lot, I don't want to get too complicated here, but yes, you could buy easily buy a real estate property in your prec, or you could loan money from your prec to another company that bought the real estate that might be owned by, you know, a partner and yourself or something like that. So there's lots of different venues here to use your retained earnings to invest in things outside of your real estate practice. Consult to your accountant, I would say. Exactly. Uh, Great. Uh, okay, let's continue. Um, I'm going to stop the sharing so you look bigger, Cam. I'm bigger uh, so we can see you a little bit better. It's easier <laughs> to uh, yeah, get a perfect. sense of what you're saying. Uh, let's Thanks. keep going with this. Wendy Zhang, once the personal corporation is registered, we have to send the documents to RICO by ourselves for approval or by Remax Realtron. And when we sign the agreement between PREC and Realtron. Um, so just go over again, they will register their corporation Next step, they will sign the agreement with Remax Realtron. And the third step then is that they, they will send it to RICO. Uh, do we have the email address or we'll have it 
for them when they sign the contract. Yeah, I think it's registration at uh, rico.on.ca, but I'll confirm that for you guys on Tuesday. I'll send out a little announcement just to tell you what the email address is. I believe that's it, but I just want to make sure. Okay, so I think I'm just visualizing in my head a bunch of uh, people coming in next week saying, hey, get me signed up, get me signed up. So we will have a process uh, ready for you by Tuesday. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, just ask your manager and your manager will be aware. Yeah. Great. Uh, does the PREC affect spousal income splitting? Um, it does. Uh, so yes. Um, if your spouse is a non-equity owner of a PREC, which they can be, so non-equity owner, and they're not registered, right? So they're not an agent. You can technically dividend income to them, but you need to set up your corporation to be able to do that. So the type of shares and the share agreement for the non-equity shares have to be really special and set up properly. So that is where your accountant has got to be involved in that decision and make sure the shares and the share agreement is correct for your non-equity shareholders, which are in this case, your spouse or your parents or your kids. Great. And sorry, <clears throat> let me just add to that. Guys, this is where you need a good accountant and to set up the companies cheap, like Cam said, a thousand dollars to do taxes, uh, for them to file your return on a basic program is cheap, but spend a little bit of money and spend two or three hours with your accountant explaining uh, your long-term plans, your kids, your family members, because setting it up at the beginning is correctly for your circumstances is the most important. Like Cam uh, just said, do you want kids to be part of it? Do you want parents to be part of it? You know, like this is where you need a good accountant because this is tax planning, which is what you need. And why we're doing this is to help you save taxes. Yeah. So spend, don't just rush through it with an accountant, sit down and, and spend a little money uh, uh, designing it for you specifically and your needs and your future needs. Great. Uh, so a lot of the questions I'm just trying to ruffle through, we've sort of answered already, no extra cost from Realtron. Uh, you don't have to be a broker. Uh, do you have to add personal real estate corporation to the name of the corporation? Does it have to say personal real estate corporation or can I say Jeremy Polarski crazy enterprises Inc. unlimited? Yeah, no, my <laughs> understanding is you don't have to have personal real estate corporation in the name. You can just have crazy, crazy Polarski Inc. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have to, by the way, do we have to disclose this? Uh, is it something you want to put on your email signature and your business card? No, you can't. You can't. Oh, you, so you do can't not do that. So you anyway. can't do, do it. it anyway. Yeah. Do not so put any, any on anything. Yeah. Only I know the wild name of my wild. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's okay, registered, good. but yeah, you're not, you're not yeah. advertising it. Yeah. Great. Are there any special requirements the accountant or lawyer should have, or just a good accountant, uh, typical normal accountant. Good, good accountant can incorporate and do an incorporated tax right. return. And your guys yeah. are not complicated tax returns. So yeah. Good. Uh, for deals done before my personal incorporation was set up, uh, would commission be issued in personal name? Yes. Still personal name. Uh, do we talk to both a lawyer and accountant or either one? Either one is fine. Get to your accountant first and make sure you're doing the right thing for yourself. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what about pre-construction deals that haven't been that have been submitted but have never been paid out by the builder? Well, technically, that's a pending deal too. So technically, we have to pay that out to you individually. Uh, if you haven't submitted any paperwork, right, and all the paperwork comes in, you know, after that, you're a personal real estate corporation. I, that's your decision, I guess, right? If we've got it all set up in our system that you're a PREC and and we pay it to your PREC and your PREC is in existence and the the deal doesn't. Uh, it doesn't come to fruition from a paper perspective till after your prec is incorporated, then we could pay it to that. But it's a, technically a, any pending deal, got to pay to you individually. Anything you write after your prec is active, we can pay to your prec. Great. Uh, Ron Goldkind wants to clarify for agents coming to Realtron who have a prec already uh, going forward, will they need to do any additional uh, paperwork with Rico, or uh, do they have to sign that additional agreement as well with uh, Realtron, or does it automatically transfer over? 
Yeah, no. So they would sign an agreement with Realtron, so a services agreement with Realtron, and then they would just have the registration transferred as normal between brokerages. So uh, no extra process from Rico at this point in time. They they may implement a more process, but at this point in time, that's it. Great. Um, can a, can an agent use an existing corporation as long as it meets the shareholder restrictions? Yes. Great. So if you have a corporation set up that's not being used or being used for something else, you can use yeah, it. Yeah, you can use it. Yeah. Great. Uh, Jess, we has one more question. Um, if she pays her assistant out of the PREC, do you need to set up a payroll account for the PREC under CRA? Is it a new payroll account? Uh, yeah. So if you're paying a salary, so payroll, mm -hmm. yes, it's a new payroll account because you're withholding income tax, uh, CPP, EI, uh, health tax for them, right? So yes, you, you set up a, a payroll account just like you would set up an HST account with your, uh, with your personal real estate corp. Great. Uh, okay. Just going through another bunch of similar questions. No federal corporation. Hold on, Jer Jeremy. Yes. While you are, I'm not sure if something can, maybe you can clarify it the uh, the shareholder, you as the agent who owns the PREC, uh, they are paid as an independent contractor or as an employee? Independent contractor or employee, they can do either or a, combination, again, or a combination thereof. Right, whatever the accountant sets up for you. Yeah. And this is why it's important. So you can get paid by dividend, you can get paid as an employee or you can get paid as an independent contractor. Yeah. So it's really not, guys, it sounds complicated, but it isn't, but you just need the right tax advice. We can only give you some ideas, but that's why you pay your accountant to, to give you the right tax information. Sorry, Jeremy, uh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, clarification. Do we need to register another HST account with CRA other than the one we have for personal real estate? Uh, so they have an HST number on their own. They need to maintain that one and get a HST number for their PREC, correct? Yes, correct. You're gonna have two HST accounts now, one for your PREC, one for you individually, which you already have. Great, uh, I have a corporation. Can I modify it to be a real estate corporation? Yes. Yep. Uh, once you leave the PREC, what are the implications if you wanna close down your PREC? Um, so not too much. You, you've got a company that exists that you'll have to deal with the retained earnings in it, right? So if you're truly winding up a company, you have to get rid of the assets out of that company. So there's usually a tax event that happens then, either capital gains or, or income attributed to you personally. But I'm not sure, you know, why you would, honestly. Uh, there's really very, you know, very little cost of doing this and it's a great benefit and, and uh, you know, anyhow. But, and I, as, as most realtors, I'm sure you're never gonna retire, so. <laughs> And I guess you just keep the corporation keep going, going. Even if you're not that active, you keep the company going, right? And just pay yourself a little bit every year out of it to minimize your taxes, right? It's like an RRSP from that perspective, mm -hmm. right? It's a great other way for retirement savings. So I don't really think you'd ever want to shut the thing down. Right. Uh, and we already went over that it can be, you can use it to invest in real estate or stocks or other investments. Uh, what are the capital gains benefits from the sales of rental properties in a PREC or Remax Realtron Corporation? So it would be the same, um, and Cami mentioned some sort of benefits. Yeah, so not for your passive real estate investments, though, unfortunately. Uh, so there is a capital lifetime capital gains exemption for small businesses. It's about $880,000, but that's for active from active business income, right? So it's not intended for the holding of real estate. So it's just a passive investment. So if a property management firm that's active, uh, holding or income property, you just collect rent is, is not active, right? So, uh, so don't, don't go into this without talking to an accountant if your plan is to invest in real estate and you think you've got a much bigger capital gain exemption because of that, the answer you won't within this structure. And so it's a good point. Uh, you bring up an active business. So if you are uh, one day selling your business or selling your book of business, then you could uh, benefit through capital gains from your practice. Exactly. So exactly. You, you could sell your business for half a million bucks and you have like a half a million capital gain, but you get an exemption on that. So you'd pay zero tax on that value of that business. So that's why it's fantastic. Right. Uh, are there any special criteria requirements from an accountant or lawyer in terms of what you tell them? Other than it has to be a federally incorporated, no, it actually has to be a provincially, provincially. company. Yeah. So just be clear, 
Uh, you need Jeremy, to... you're getting to be an expert. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting all these answers. Okay, uh, so I, I might change my, I have all these people who want to open corporations. How do I become an accountant by Monday? <laughs> uh, so yes, yeah, so you have to, it has to be provincially incorporated, uh, just any type of, re it's just a regular corporation, just any corporation. Every regular corp, one. exactly. And the enter into an agreement with Remax Ruraltron and, you're, and you send an email to Rico. Yeah, I think Alex made the great point though. Don't just say I need a corporation set up, ask them for their advice on how you best set it up, how to pay yourself best for your personal situation and your personal goals. Yeah. And again, sorry, Jeremy, to interrupt. Mm -hmm. It'll be different for uh, somebody who is single, somebody who's married, somebody who's got kids. Right. It's, it's not, it's not, it's just how they set up the corporation and the shareholders and the shares and how they, I mean, there's voting shares, there's non-voting shares. Um, so um, that depends on your circumstances. Right, Cam? Yeah, exactly. Good. Uh, how do you take money out of your prec for yourself, dividends or salary? I guess you can do both. Dividend, salary, or commissions, independent contractor, all three. Or you, right. or you can loan yourself money too. Yeah, again, ask your accountant about that. Once yeah. the prec is created and recorded in the Realtron system, will agents have the flexibility to select how they're paid commission? Can they be paid part of it into their prec and part of it into their individual, or would it all go into their prec? I'll I'm not sure why you'd want to do yeah. that. So yes, yeah. but uh, so I, 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 you'd pay it all to the prec and then you'd determine yeah. what you want to take out or whatever it, that gives you the control of it. So I guess Cam, theoretically thinking about it, if you know, you've got uh, pre-con sales coming, so you might, those pre-con sales will be personal because they were done before. Let's say you did a sale, a condo two years ago, and it's closing next year. So for the short term, if you've got long-term closings that were made before, they would be paid individually. But the whole idea is to get as much as you can into the PREC. That's the goal. The more you put into it, the more you're going to be saving. Yeah. <clears throat> you just pull out what you need to live off of. Right? Yeah. Correct. Good. Uh, regular number companies are okay. Whatever Ontario Limited, that should be yeah. fine. Yeah, I wanted to yeah. five six seven Ontario Inc. Yeah. Great. Uh, do we have recommendation for accountants that have experience on this? Again, any accountant? Um, yeah, I, honestly, there's so many accountants out there, guys. Uh, you, you, I mean, unless you're dissatisfied, you, you probably all have an accountant right now. So I'd speak with them. They probably know your situation best because they've worked with you already. Uh, how? About switching in the future, I think you mentioned this in the presentation, switching from your PREC to Remax Realtron. If I say I want to PREC now, but two years from now, things are going well, I want to incorporate my business and, and be a franchise of Remax, uh, how do I do so? Yeah, so that's, that's a great question. So first off, you don't need to set up a new company. You already have one. That company can become a Remax Realtron Incorporated company. We would just go through the process of, of getting you a franchise, a Remax franchise, and then we would go through the process of having Rico approve your company as a registrant. So that's one of the key differences, right? A PREC is not a registrant for Rico. An incorporated company with Remax Realtron is a registrant. It's an actual brokerage, right? So, so those would be the two things we'd do. We'd take your existing PREC, we'd get approval from the franchisor for you to be a franchisee and the name you'd like to call it. And then we would actually get Rico's approval for that brokerage as a registrant. Great. So I, uh, I think we have two or three more questions and we'll wrap it up at exactly one hour. Can CPP and OAS be deposited into your PREC? Can CPP and, no, CPP and OAS are personal programs. So they have to be paid to you individually as a retiree. You know, obviously those are for retirement benefits. And so they would be paid to you individually. They can't be paid to your PREC. Great. Uh, if you don't retain any money inside the corporation and pull out all of the money, is there any tax advantage? Is there any advantage whatsoever to having a PREC? Well, maybe not in that year, but as I said, if you have one year where you've got 30,000 extra, the next year you have zero, then you can pull that 30,000 into the next year and pay lower taxes on it. So even if you've got, you're pulling out everything over a five-year period of time, if you're pulling out everything over a five-year period of time, 
we really need to talk because we need to help you uh, help you make some, some more money. money. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know, the, the question actually is from Matt Erdkamp. It's a good question. And it really made me think that uh, there's probably a big psychological benefit to it because you start making decisions instead of getting money paid into your accounts and deciding what to spend. You really have to pull money out of your business account and say, okay, if I pull a dollar out of this, I'm going to pay tax on it. So I only get 50 cents. Or, or whatever the case is. So you really start to consider that. Uh, and, and I would think it would, it would encourage you to save and make you a better saver. So if you haven't been a good saver, maybe this will save your savings. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So psychologically, you're right, Jeremy. That's a great, um, a great point. The other thing too is, I mean, we've seen, we've, we've had talks with, with many of you guys saying, look, at the level that you're making money, uh, you should personally incorporate and the answer is no I'm not making any money this year and you know when I start making money and then next year you have a big year and go can I incorporate sure you can but it's going to take three months and all the deals that you've made so far are going to be taxed at the 50 percent rate so so what we're saying is there is an additional cost of of uh, filing and so on it's, it's a minimal cost but if you are planning to make this a career, you're planning to improve your income year after year, uh, then you know, make the commitment to become a professional, make the commitment to make more money. And part of that is tax planning moving ahead. And you can't tax plan if you go, well, I'll see what I do next year, then I'll decide. That's not called tax planning. Yeah, and I, you know, one other thing, guys, uh, you know, we as realtors, we're really business people, right? And I know some of us struggle with that sometimes, right? We still see ourselves as individuals, and, you know, not a business that's a going concern for the long term. This will help your mindset, your mind frame, right? You're a business, you need to invest. You know, the, the first thing to getting a return on an investment is you got to invest, right? <laughs> so this is, this is really psychologically, guys, do this, right? As, as and, Jeremy yeah. says, it and, really is important. And psychologically going ahead with what you're saying, guys, the, the first job of any business, the first dollars the business makes, don't go into uh, paying you a salary, go into staying in the business to make sure your business stays alive next year. So first you make sure the business has money to keep going and then you pay yourself a salary. We have a habit in real estate to say, okay, let me take out all the money and then I'll see how much money I have left over for the business. That's not a business approach. You've got to, you've got to, you know, you, you've got to make sure the cow stays alive so you can milk it next year. <laughs> so you have to buy the hay first and then you buy food for yourself because you can't allow this cow to die. Sorry for my analogy. But. You can't just you can't just get a steak on the first day. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do we have two more quick questions? Uh, can the prec pay my bills directly, or I must withdraw my personal account and then pay from that? Just logistically, how does that work? Yeah, no, your prec can have a bank account, so you can pay bills from your prec. It has a bank account, obviously, for your retained earnings. So, we're going to pay a bank account that you set up with your prec. Right. So you can pay your expenses out of there, your whatever expenses you have. Right. And uh, so and just lastly, uh, once we're using an incorporated company, we can just switch that prec over to a Remax franchise that was asked. And yep. lastly, lastly, if you have rental income in your personal name, can rental income be claimed for, through your prec? Can you pay it into your prec? I guess it just depends. Uh, what, where, how yeah, you, well, the simple answer is the real estate's not owned by your prec your now. Prec. I'm getting an echo there. Um, it's not owned by your prec, so the answer is no, right? So if you own a, if you personally own investment right now, your prec doesn't own it, so the income is attributed to you individually. So, great. Uh, let me give us a pat on the back. Um, that was a lot of questions. Uh, we're just so lucky we have Cam, who uh, is an expert in uh, accounting as well as real estate, can help us understand it. Uh, Alex, to look at things from a business point of view and with uh, a lot of experience in real estate so that our agents can really see how it should work uh, and, and really get the answer. I see someone put up the question before I 
congratulate ourselves. It has to be an Ontario corporation, not a federal corporation. Uh, so maybe we pat ourselves on the back too quickly. Uh, we need to make sure everyone gets the information they need. Speak to your manager. Please be understanding that this is new for all of us. So there may be questions that we don't have the answers to, but as you can see from here, we are committed to bringing you the information, bringing you the resources uh, that you need first and being the quickest on this. That's why you're with Remax Realtron and that's how we are helping you uh, not only grow your business, but also plan for the long term and save. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Cam. Uh, for enlightening me. One and, more, and one more plug, everybody. I was going to give you guys last words. Yeah, go ahead. My last words are we're committed to your success. Just wanted to give a quick plug that next Tuesday at 10 o'clock, I have a power meeting. So I hope you all put it in your calendar and, and join me in, um, in getting ready really for the fall and the winter market because that's what we're working for right now. And uh, Cam and I had a great session this morning. We posted uh, our market um, predictions online, our market watch, a market review, and we both feel the next uh, three, four months are going to be very, very strong. I mean, we had a crazy month of sales in September despite COVID. So there's a huge hunger for real estate and you guys are the best and you got to get out there and fil fulfill it safely. Safely is the key. Sorry, that was my... Uh, Recap, Jar. Great plug. Uh, great recap. Be on Alex's meeting next Tuesday. Cam, last words to you. Uh, definitely get your prep going, guys, and uh, call your manager if you have any questions or me, but we can get rolling next week and talk to your accountant to make sure you set it up in the best way for your short-term, mid-term, long-term goals, right? So I, this will help you have that plan too. If you haven't thought about, you know, what am I doing in this business? How long am I going to be in it? What am I going to earn? What a great way to just take stock and say <laughs> that, that this will help you. Great. Uh, this is, will be posted on Facebook after this. We'll probably post it on YouTube as well for ease of watching so everyone can see it uh, and we'll send it out to you. So if you want to watch this again, if your accountant has questions about it, maybe you'll be able to send it to them uh, and we'll be able to uh, help spread the word. Uh, Came with a K, I see a great suggestion there and we'll try and follow through on that. And uh, what do we have to bring to the office on for Tuesday? We'll have contracts ready for you. Uh, just bring your, what did you call it? The one yeah, form, form one. It's your, it's your articles of incorporation. Form one is what it's called. You'll get that. I, again, if, if you're just starting your corporation today, you probably won't have it on Tuesday. But if, if you already have one, your form one, your articles of incorporation, which has the name of your company, address of your company, and you as the shareholder, obviously, of the company. And that's, that's all, all that's required. Great. I think this is a great step for the industry. It's great for our businesses and hopefully great for your savings. Uh, thank you for the last time, Alex and Cam. Thanks for everyone who tuned in. And uh, we'll see you next Tuesday at 10 a.m. for Alex's power meeting. Look for the invite in an email. Thank you, everybody. Nice to see you. Yeah, take care.